afresh on us, Master. Yes, Lord, as we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, repenting for everything we've done that's offended you in thought, word, and in deed, works in the flesh. Wash us with the blood. Purge us with your presence. Fill us, Master. Fill us as we welcome the Holy Spirit. Fill us that we may be one with you. Lord, we lift you Israel, Master. We ask for a hedge of protection around Israel, Master. Destroy her enemies and protect your people. We speak peace, blessing, and prosperity and protection to Jerusalem and Israel and your people, Master. Expose the Antichrist, Master, that your people will know the season. Now, Father, we commit all things to you. We thank you for the price of Jesus, for the seal of the Spirit, and the angels that bear us up. We thank you for our heavenly family that's here right now. We honor you and bless you, my King. Open our ears, eyes, and heart to receive what your Spirit says. Let the anointing and the power of your presence break every yoke of bondage. Sever us from the entanglements. Help us sacrifice self. That it's no longer we that live, but you that live. You said, call me, and you would show us great and mighty things. Lord, we look for more of you, more of you, and less of us. Grant us more wisdom tonight, Master. More knowledge, more understanding, discernment, strength, and boldness. That we may be about your business in truth, spirit, and in power in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give somebody a hug here. And tell them this is your night to die. <laughs> Isn't God good all the time? He makes a way of escape for us. The whole thing is, is being discerning so that you can go through the right door. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of testing going on. Amen. It's testing before the blessing. <laughs> go ahead. You can laugh about it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying, man. <laughs> Oh, you know, I can only share with you that he's trying to bring his body to the end of herself. And, you know, one of the things that we had discussed about in, in the area of um, how God supernaturally provides, and that's the area is, is, is you continue to lay yourself as a sacrifice, just like Abraham uh, laid Isaac as a sacrifice, and then the Lord provided. And it's fulfilling your priesthood. And, um, you know, we're getting ready to enter 2009, and we're going to talk more about that later. But um, I'm going to share uh, what the Lord has put on my heart about 2009, but uh, we'll probably do that Sunday. But prior to that, I want to share something about entering and what's going on right now and where we're headed. Um, and, and one of the things that he had shared about, you know, even though that there's that sacrifice of self and the maintaining the supernatural provision, there's another place that he was um, speaking to me about. And um, I'd like to go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. It's a uh, simple message tonight. And... Uh, God willing, it'll be a short one. You notice I said God willing, right? Come on now. And we want a true message from the Lord, right? <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2, is everybody there? In verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal... The Lord knows those who are his. Ooh, this is powerful. Because this is what he's establishing. The Lord knows those who are his. See, if you're not his, he's not yours. Are you listening? Hello. See, he knows those who are his. Because they've given. They've given their all. They said, you're, you're, my, uh, you're mine, Lord, and I'm yours. They made an exchange, life for life. 
The Lord knows those who are what? His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid foolish and arrogant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by the devil to do his will. So there's something about here he calls a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. And one of the things he began to share with me is about honorable death. There's got to be a place where there's an honorable death. And he's talking about coming to the end of yourself. Not only have we, he talked about sacrificing yourself on the altar as, as Abraham sacrificed Isaac. And it's in the arena of Romans 12, 1, where we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice. And God moves supernaturally with provisions if you maintain your priesthood. But in this, he's requiring an honorable death of each and every one now. And this is how we're entering 2009. It's going to be required an honorable death. And we'll talk more about this. Is everybody okay? One of the areas of requiring an honorable death means you must kill the past. It's your responsibility to kill your past. Kill your past. Resist lust. Follow in fellowship with those of a pure heart. In other words, the Bible tells us, you know, um, bad company corrupts good habits. In other words, you're in fellowship, not with people that are rebellious, not wannabes, but willabies. So we must kill our past, resist lust, and follow in fellowship of those out of a pure heart. Is everybody with me? Avoid contamination of words. Avoid contamination of words. You know, you get around people that say certain things, man, and they, they'll corrupt you. Contamination of words, also things that you speak, you must be discerning what you say. Avoid contamination of words. You know, people will sometimes, you know, speak over you certain things that shouldn't be spoken over you. Especially doctors. <laughs> they love to contaminate people, man. Man, you got this, 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 and this. <clears throat> Get out of here. Get behind me. The Bible says, by his stripes, I'm healed. I'm see people come in agreement with the voice of the stranger, that will contaminate you. When you come in agreement with the voice of the stranger, you get contaminated. Hello? Fear will contaminate you. Pride will kill you. <laughs> Personal reverence into a deadly end. So, avoid contamination of words. Maintain a surrendered, submissive life in humility. Maintain a surrendered, submissive life in humility. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Be ready to sacrifice selfish ambitions. Be ready to sacrifice selfish ambitions. Be ready to sacrifice selfish ambitions. There's more to that one. Be ready to sacrifice selfish ambitions and alter your course and rescue of others. 
according to his will. See, so many people have selfish ambitions that they don't even realize that they're selfish ambitions because they want to do what they want to do. But the Lord says, be ready to sacrifice these selfish ambitions so that the course can be altered so he can set you out to do what you're supposed to do according to his will and not according to your own. Is everybody okay? That will be known as a vessel of honor. That's a vessel of honor. And what God's trying to do is to not only bring us to the end of ourself and sacrifice self, but make it an honorable death. And we'll talk more about that. Go to John 10. John chapter 10. Everybody okay? Honorable death. Hallelujah. In verse 7. Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, and all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. In other words, they didn't come in agreement with the voice of the stranger, right? I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? Saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Keep going. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Would you call it an honorable death? Yes. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep because his only concern is money. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. I love that. One day we'll talk more about that. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me because I what? Lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and what? And have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Therefore... There was a division among the Jews because of these sayings. They didn't like that. And many of them said, he has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? I get this all the time. (laughs) Others said, these are not the words of one who has a demon, you idiot. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? (laughs) Praise God. See, true honor comes with an honorable death. We are not only required to daily sacrifice self, but to maintain and accomplish an honorable death. Honorable death will be required for 2009. Dying to self for an honorable cause. Does everybody understand that? Dying to self for an honorable cause will promote an honorable death. Everybody with me? Go to Psalm 101. Psalm 101. Man, he's talking about dying again? Amen. We're going to talk about dying until we die. (laughs) Psalm 101. Would you read it with me? I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praises. I will behave what? I will behave what? 
wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Now, this is powerful because this is a requirement in its own way as an honorable death. In other words, you must live an honorable life with honorable ethics established by an honorable cause. Everything about what the psalmist just said was talking about living an honorable life. What did he say? He said, man, I'm not going to allow wicked things to come before me. I'm gonna, not even going to hang around with people that lie. I'm going to get, I, they, people won't even be in my presence that are not right with God. Does everybody understand that? I will praise the Lord. I will sing to him with mercies and grace. I will praise him because he's justice and true. I will not allow a perverse heart to be established in me. This is powerful. He says, I hate the work of those who what? Fall away. I hate the work of those who what? Fall away. See, what was he doing? He's maintaining an honorable cause. These were honorable causes. He was maintaining his purity of his heart so that he can maintain a relationship with Lord in an honorable way. Is everybody okay? To acquire an honorable death, you must live an honorable life. To acquire an honorable death, you must live an honorable life with honorable ethics established by an honorable cause. Matthew 16. And you thought you were dead, huh? (laughs) Matthew 16. This is an area where God is really beginning to shave the garbage that we're attached to. This is an area where um, the desire for more of him to maintain an honorable life. Because, see, this is an area where you know you can't do it. You're totally convinced that you can't do it no more. You're totally convinced that you don't want to live your life anymore. You want to live his life. You are totally convinced and committed to no longer live your life, but the life of Christ. In Matthew 16 and verse 24, would you read it with me? Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him kill himself. Oh. <laughs> let him what? Deny himself. Same thing, right? <laughs> let him sacrifice self. Does everybody understand that? And take up his cross and follow me. Now I want to share something before we go any further because he says anyone who wants to follow me must deny himself. In other words, daily sacrifice yourself to the Lord. And take up his cross. His cross is the cause of in purpose. It's a divine cause and purpose. It's an honorable purpose. It's no longer the things that you're doing. In other words, you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for him. It's an honorable cause now. So he says he must deny himself, sacrifice yourself, take up his cross, pick up the cause and purpose that he has. It's a divine one. And then you can follow him. Right? And then follow me. Has everybody got it? For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. You know, people don't realize this. They just skim through this sometimes. Whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. 
Believe me, I see many people do this. They fight for their life instead of for the divine cause. They fight for their desires instead of the divine cause. But whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each one according to his works. The sacrifice of self, the cross representing the divine purpose or cause, and to follow him. Following him means following him in the world to an honorable death. Did Jesus die honorably? Yes. In other words, you follow all the way to the end where your life is acknowledged as an honorable life. Jesus gave his life, didn't he? He gave his life to save and power truth, and he opened a way for a new pathway of life to heaven. Jesus sacrificed himself and died with dignity, honor, and respect, leaving an impact legacy. That's an honorable death. To leave an impact legacy. True honor is to die to self and not to die for self. It's to what? Die to yourself and not to die for yourself. You know, soldiers that go out and fight and die for others, not for themselves. Their cause and purpose is honorable. They have an honorable death. They are acknowledged, aren't they? To die of an overdose of drugs is a dishonorable death. Come on, think about this. Can you imagine somebody getting shot and killed as a, a, a thief? They go to rob a store and they get shot and killed. That's a dishonorable death. There is no legacies left behind, is there? Executed as a murderer is a dishonorable death. Even if they come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's still a dishonorable death because they left no legacy behind of a divine purpose. Does everybody understand this? Acts of ignorance causing death is dishonorable. Dying without a divine purpose is a dishonorable death. Does everybody understand this? See, the Lord is bringing us to a place where there's an honorable death. Not only an honorable death in your life as you're dying daily to yourself and sacrifice, but an honorable death as you're dying right now, there is a legacy being established right now in your life. Right now of what you're doing. Go to Judges 16. Judges 16. In verse 23. Now we know that Samson was a Nazarite. And uh, the Lord called him to free Israel from the Palestines. The Philistines, I mean. <laughs> Been watching the news a lot. <laughs> and, and in this, Samson did not fulfill what he was supposed to do. He fell into lust. And he exposed the secret that was given to him of what maintained his power, and he wasn't supposed to reveal it. And he did to a woman named Delilah. I won't go any further on that, but uh, <laughs> um, in this, he lost his power and the Philistines took him captive and they poked out his eyes and he became a slave. And because he was big and so forth, and they used to use him as entertainment and moving things around or whatever. And in verse um, 23, would you read it with me? Now the lords of the Philistines gathered together to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, which was a pagan demon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, our God has delivered into our hands Samson, our enemy. When the people saw him, they praised their God for, they said, our God has delivered 
into our hands our enemy, the destroyer of our land, and the one who multiplied our dead. So it happened when their hearts were married that they said, Call for Samson that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison, and he performed for them, and they stationed him between pillars. And then Samson said to the lad who held him by the hand, Let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. Now the temple was filled with all men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there and about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Then Samson called to the Lord saying, O Lord God, remember me, I pray. Strengthen me, I pray, just this once. O God, that I may with one blow take vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. What was he crying out for? An honorable death. Because, see, if he would have died beforehand, it would have been dishonorable. Does everybody see this? He was crying for an honorable death. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple, and he braced himself against them, one on his right and one on his left. Then Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all of his might, and the temple fell on the lords and all the people who were in it. So that the dead that he killed at his death were more than he had killed in his life. Does everybody see that? So the more, in other words, he was supposed to have done that while he was alive. But in his death, he killed more. So he ended up with an honorable life instead of a dishonorable one. Why? Because was, that was his divine purpose was to wipe out the Philistines. And he didn't. Because he fell into lust. Is everybody okay? No. Samson died with dignity and honor to accomplish the divine purpose he was set out to do from the beginning. But his lust blinded him and he was taken captive. Now, um, I'm going to share something that you've probably heard before, but this is an area where God is really desiring us to have a honorable death now again not only daily because daily we should be leaving our legacy behind every day and and not only in that but then there should be a, a legacy left behind when we're taken and one night i was in a dream and um i found myself riding on the ocean on a horse and some of you heard this already and anyways i was riding on this horse on the ocean and and all of a sudden, the horse went over to a naval ship. And the naval ship had a hole in the side, and it was bent over. And me and the horse started hitting it and closing up the, the side of the ship. And uh, so after we got done closing up the side of the ship, we started riding. And all of a sudden, this voice came from heaven and said, Will you die for me? And I said, Yes, Lord. And that horse took off across the ocean and I went between two destroyers and I realized I was heading for the Gulf Coast, not Florida. Hello. I was headed toward Iraq and all the eastern. Does everybody understand? And it began to rain oil and I began to suffocate and I woke up. About uh, three weeks later, that's when our naval ship got hit from Yemen. About three weeks after that dream. And I realized that the Lord said to me, are you willing to die for me? And I knew that he was talking about this country and that many of our people would be killed because we would be going to war over there in Iraq and so forth. Now, I didn't know anything about what was about to happen, but I realized this later. And it still happened. You know how many terrorists and so forth? You know how many people are dying left and right? How many people have died in the towers and, and all kinds of things that are happening right now. And it's, and it's continuing, isn't it? But one of the things he said to me, would you die for me? In other words, it was an, an arena word. Would you have an honorable death? Would you die for me? And when I said, yes, Lord, that horse took off. And next thing I know, we were right near the, the coast and in the Gulf area, right near Iraq and all. And it started raining oil and I began to suffocate. And I woke up. And of course, we've seen all the things that have happened already with the oil crisis and the gas and everything else. And there's other things, but I'm not going to get all into it. 
But I'm just sharing with you, in that dream, there was, the Lord was requiring an honorable death. And I really believe that it's now. He's requiring, requiring his children, his body of Christ, to live an honorable death. To live a what? Honorable death. Let's go a little further. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. In verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Would you read it with me? What does it say? But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Now that's an area where we're fulfilling priesthood, isn't it? By fulfilling your priesthood, you are offering yourself every day as a living sacrifice. Just like Abraham offered Isaac as a living sacrifice and God provided. Okay, let's go a little further. Who once were not a people, but now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have what? Obtained mercy. Keep going. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Having your what? Your conduct honorable. Hello. Having your what? Conduct honorable. Without an honorable conduct, how can you die an honorable death? Among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Where a royal priesthood, honorable conduct, leaves the markings of Christ. And recognition is an honorable death. It leaves what? The markings of Christ. Go to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. Honorable death. In verse 26. In verse 26, let's read it. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge. See, now the word fear here means honor and respect. Reverence to God. Let me share this with you. If you cannot fear the Lord in the honor and respect and reverence to God, there's no way that you're going to live an honorable death. Has everybody got it? There's no way that you're going to have a life that will be an honorable death. If you cannot reverence, fear, and respect God Almighty. It's impossible. Verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a what? foundation of life to turn one away from the snares of death in a multitude of people is a king's honor but in a lack of people is the downfall of a prince he was slow to wrath has great understanding but he who is impulsive exalts folly a sound heart is life to the body but envy is rottenness to the bones he who oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but he who honors him has mercy on the needy. The wicked is banished in his wickedness, but the righteous has a refuge in his death. Go to Proverbs 15 in verse 33. It says, The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. But before honor is what? Humility or humbleness. Humbleness is what we were talking about. Go to Proverbs 20. In verse 3, it says, It is honorable for a man to stop what? Striving, since any fool can start a quarrel. <laughs> in other words, there is honor in stop defending yourself. Hello? Stop defending yourself because there is honor in it. You don't need to prove yourself. God will prove. So many people are trying to prove themselves and what they know and who they know and whatever. Stop. There's honor in allowing God to reveal who you are and not you. Turn to Acts 7. 
Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7. In verse 48, let's read it together. However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? Now, I want you to understand that um, here Stephen was speaking to many of the elders of the Jews and the Pharisees and Sadducees and so forth. Go to 51. What does he say? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears, you always what? Resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayer and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. I'd like to say they were cut to the throat. And they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Why? Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Oh, this man made these guys real good now. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named who? Saul. This Saul is the one who became Paul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not what? Charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. In other words, he died. But see, Stephen died an honorable death, didn't he? He left a legacy behind because what he did right there, Saul was standing. And what he saw Stephen do... Saul could never, it could never leave him how this man had a relationship with God what Saul never did until he became Paul. And it didn't happen until he got filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And so many believers lack that. They have a knowledge relationship instead of spiritual relationship. And it's important. Stephen's sacrifice impacted others around him in other words when you die an honorable death your life will impact others go to matthew 10 matthew 10 verse 16 everybody okay you ready to die an honorable death daily let's read this together Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and a father his child. And children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be what? Shall be saved. With an honorable death. Go to Revelation 6. Revelation chapter 6. You know. You are challenged daily. 
You're not only challenged by the devil and the evil spirits, but these spirits are using people to challenge you. Every time you deny the arena of life of this world and submission to any way of the life of this world, you are having an honorable death. Does everybody get it? Did you ever notice that when the people used to hang around with now that you've changed and they tried to sway you to do things or whatever, and when you say no, they think that you're self-righteous, but there's something about you that they don't understand, but you have left an impact to them, no matter what they say and no matter how weird they think you are. It might have been a weird impact, but it was a righteous impact. Because they can't understand why you are the way you are now. The only thing they know is that you love Jesus. See, but what they're witnessing is an honorable death to yourself. They're witnessing an honorable death, which is leaving an impact or a legacy with somebody. I've gotten letters and calls from people I used to work with years ago when I'd gotten saved. And, and saying something, man, you know, there was just something about you. I could never forget this, that, and whatever. And it was just the Jesus in me not wanting to fellowship or be a part of the demons in them. But in that, there was an honorable death acknowledged because I left an impact into their lives. And the same thing with you. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. It says, and when Jesus opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. Then a white robe was given to each one of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were, was complete. See, they were given, those were called martyrs. They were given a robe for their honorable deaths. Go to Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Would you read it with me, please? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he what? Humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. It was an honorable death. Obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow on those in heaven and on those on earth and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, Jesus was obedient to an honorable death. Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. (laughs) But you still must sacrifice yourself to become obedient. (laughs) Has everybody got it? See, so many people are looking at the things that they're sacrificing by giving up. That's, you know, well, I'm giving up this and I'm giving up that. Well, I'm sacrificing. Man, you ain't dead. You're still grumbling and complaining what you lost. Kill your past. Do what? Kill your past. If you're not willing to kill your past, you cannot have an honorable death. That's called regret. Hello? Hello? Well, man, my walk used to be like this. and Man, die. This is a new day. Yesterday's gone. Tomorrow's not come, right? The Bible says daily sacrifice 
yourself. Daily maintain an honorable death that you will leave a legacy and impact others. In Hebrews 11 and verse 30, it takes faith, doesn't it? Because faith is an action, isn't it? So it's going to take faith. Read in verse 30. By faith it says the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Japheth, also David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, That they might obtain a better sacrifice. In other words, they weren't willing to escape. They were willing to die. Still others had trial of mockings and scourgings. Yes, and of chains and imprisonments. They were stoned. They were sawed in two. They were what? Tempted. Were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. These were murders. Does everybody understand that? And I'm going to close at Psalm 15. You all can repent later. (laughs) I heard what you were saying. takes faith, doesn't it? Faith. That means you got to stir yourself up. You got to build your most holy faith up. You got to praise and worship. You got to die. An honorable death. And leave a legacy. You know, people that are not willing to die to themselves can never leave a legacy. The only legacy they left is, what a bonehead. Yeah, I remember him. What an idiot. (laughs) Knew the truth and wouldn't walk it. I mean, that's the kind of legacy you want to leave behind. That's not an honorable legacy. I had a couple guys come back in my class today that were supposed to come here, and they decided to take a detour from jail. And they came, so they were in my class today. I said, hey, welcome home. Yeah, I need to talk to you. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I went somewhere else. And, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm really not in here because of... Hello. Bonehead. Didn't get it. Why didn't you come here when you were released? Well, I wanted to take a detour. Let me tell you something. You'll have to re-earn the trust of God. Because you brought a curse on yourself. I don't get it. No. You said you were going to do this and you didn't. You brought a curse on yourself and you will reap until you repent. And of course, you still reap with a curse anyways. Even when you repent, there's always some sort of reaping. Does everybody get it? See, that's what stops an honorable death. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they cannot understand the things of the Spirit. 
People who die in ignorance of certain things die in dishonorable death, don't they? In Psalm 15, would you read it with me? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, glory. Who may dwell in your holy hill. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. Die to yourself with dignity and honor all the way to the end. And die an honorable death, not only daily, but eternally. That's what's expected to enter into 2009. We'll share more of what 2009 will bring. It's a good day to die. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you, Master. Lord, I pray the blessing upon each and every one here. And I'm asking, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the blood be applied to these seeds and that they grow and bear fruit for your glory. Lord, give us revelation, impartation, and understanding about an honorable death that we may see it all the way through before decisions are made, whether it bring honor to you or honor to self. And any honor to self would be a dishonor. But all honor to you would be an honor. So, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness in any area of our lives where we didn't fulfill those things you've asked us to do. We repent for any area of our life where it was a dishonor to you. And we ask for your strength and guidance and leading of your spirit that we may live an honorable life of death according to your will and way. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.